So we will start now with some seated poses. Put your hands on your kneecaps. We did this yesterday in the afternoon. Let's enjoy it once again. It's a great exercise for the spine. Breathe in and while exhaling, curl in and relax your head to chest. Come back to center and then relax your head to the back. Feel the lower back bend. And center again and curl in. Center and back. And one more time. Enjoy the nice movement, vertebra by vertebra. And now relax back to center. Lift your right leg and let's do a few movements with, the, with feet. Up and down, up and down, up and down. And now circles, rotations to one side, and to the other side. Let's do the same with the other leg. Lift it up and down and up the feet, a foot, down, up, down, up, and now rotations. And to the other side. And relax your feet. Land them well on the floor. Back straight, head straight. Interlace fingers in front of your torso. Bring up, palms up, stretch. And now look to your left. And center. And to your right. And center. One more time. Left. Center. And right. And now relax, come to initial position. Uh, I see that uh, many of us sit with crossed legs. So now let's cross leg, right one on the top of the left one. Place your left hand on the knee and place your arm, uh, pardon, hand on the back seat and twist. Come back to center, change legs. Right hand, left knee left hand on the back and twist and once again try to do the twists when you exhale then it will be really efficient and again to the right and center change legs left and come back to center the next pose is called eagle pose Hands up, please. So, right on the top of the left one. Try to bring together your palms. If not, just leave them like this. <laughs> okay, now relax your chin to the chest and slowly bend. And come back to center. Hands up, change left on the top of the right one and again relax head bend and come back to center and relax right arm on your side left one on the head pull the head to the left come back to center on the other side Center. Now interlace your fingers on your neck. Relax head and start rotation to the right. It's a kind of self-massage as well. One more time. Change rotation to the other side. And last circle and relax in the center. So we will finish one uh, uh, breathing technique which is connected with sound. I will first demonstrate and explain because otherwise you can't hear it. Your ears will be plugged. So 
you put your hands on the uh, arms on the sides, plug your ears with the thumbs, and make a nice and steady and deep humming noise. It's like this. Mm -hmm. So this is the humming bee, like the black bee. Come on, breathe in deeply and then. Mm -hmm. One more time. Mm -hmm. And last time. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Marina and Irina. Wasn't that great? Hmm. <laughs> I was doing it a little bit. I was. Uh, it's actually, um, ladies and gentlemen, a proven fact that if you have uh, Marina and Irina at your conference, people are more likely to rebook next year. <laughs> I've, I've had that verified, so I think it would be a really good idea that you get Marina and Irina's details have them at your conference and you will get more rebookings than you've ever had before. There you go. Okay, we've now got our first speaker of the afternoon, the only woman speaker Absolutely. at our conference. Um, she's given me four things that she's very proud of that I'm going to tell you about. She's been in the meetings industry for 30 years. Hard to believe, Linda. Um, she's the only woman who's ever been invited to speak in Saudi Arabia. She's also been married for 30 years, also hard to believe, Linda. And she is Portuguese Businesswoman of the Year, so congratulations on that. Please welcome Linda Pereira. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Are you all awake? Yes? Oh, good, I'm so glad. Did you have a nice lunch? Good, okay, now for the bad part. Stand up. Whoa! <laughs> Quick, no exercise, I promise. I'm not going to compete with the previous lady who's much better at it than I am. Okay, now, you have to tell the truth, okay? No lying, I will know I'm watching you, all right? Everyone stand up, and that means everyone, except for the presenter, of Thank course. So uh, okay, all right, now, we have been here, most of us, for two days. Even if you only came today for the first time, you have been here, I presume, since 9, 9.30 this morning, right? Yes, okay. I arrived at 23 minutes to 9, okay. I, in addition to being the only woman on the program, which I object to because it's, we are a female-dominated uh, industry, we're 72% of the industry and I'm the only person on the program, shameful. Okay, but, uh, uh, the only woman on the program. Um, but, I am also the only client on the program. I buy destinations. I buy venues, and I buy hotels. So I'm the only client on the program. So, what I want to ask you now is, how many of you have actually come up to me and spoken to me, please sit down if you have had a conversation with me which you started. Not the Brazilian colleague because he was introduced by another friend. Stand up. <laughs> you, were you were told to come and talk to me. Okay. So if you've had a conversation that you started with me which lasted more than 10 seconds, not me smiling at you, that's not a conversation, uh, sit down. So the two people sitting down have had a conversation with me. Ah, no. <laughs> Okay, now, that is disgusting. You should be ashamed of yourselves. You are the internet generation. You are the generation that has Google and all that blah, 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 gobbledygook we've been talking about for two days. And you did not find out huh, that I was a client and that I could bring you business. So there are only two interpretations. You have all the business you want, you don't need any more. Or you didn't read the program. Or you didn't Google who the speakers were and you paid to be at something that you didn't know if it was going to be good or not. Are you now totally ashamed? Sit down. Okay. 
Conferences are about making contacts. Conferences are about not spending time with our friends. We can do that anytime. It's not about kissing people. We can do that anytime. I love kissing, so it's fine. Okay, we can, it's about researching before you get there. Who do I want to meet? Who is interesting? Who is an interesting contact? Who is an interesting connector? Or who can connect me to? My Brazilian colleague had a brilliant connector. He, he is mentored by a friend of mine, so he told him to come and speak to me. That's what a connector is. Go and speak to Linda, okay? So that was excuse. That was an excuse. Doesn't count. All right? And also, not only just the speakers, but who else is in the audience? Look, guys, by the time I get to a conference, I know even the underwear of all the presenters, what they are wearing under their clothes. Make sure that you find out who is going to be there. Because the whole objective of being at a conference is who else is there? What benefits can I get for the money that I invest? Because you're spending money. And even if you don't spend money, you're spending time. And if you're spending time, that's money. Okay, that's money. All right? Okay? And now, we're going to talk about sponsorship, but it's all connected to what I just said. Because if you don't talk to people, people aren't going to talk to you. Okay? Because if you knock at my door tomorrow, I won't remember you. Because you didn't talk to me. You have to make yourself memorable for the right reasons. I may be the best friend of the CEO of the company that you want to get the sponsorship from, but I don't know you for madam. Oh, we met during EventX, did we? Really? You smiled, I smiled at you and waved. Or I saw you and then I asked to be your friend on Facebook. Yeah, right. Okay. So, there is no more, there will never be, it is a fairy story. It will never be like it was before the crisis. The party is over, okay? The crisis was a brilliant event. It happened to make us wiser. We were getting stupid, okay? We were wasting money. We were not measuring. We were living in la-la land, okay? It's over. People are now aware of what they're spending their money on. They check, they analyze, they measure, they verify. You do not go up to someone today as you could in the 90s and say, I need 50,000 euros for this. And they say, really, only 50,000? Nah. Now you say, I want five euros. Five? Why? What for? What am I getting out of it? Okay? So it's all over. We have to think. I have a lot more slides than I will hopefully use because you will talk to me because I'll come down in a minute. Okay, you'll talk to me and I won't have time to finish my presentation, which is not a bad thing because you can have it if you ask me for it. So that's fine. Whatever I can't do because I put a lot of information on it so that I could help you because I don't like uh, theoretical, beautiful, uh, magical things. I like things on how to. I'm a businesswoman. I don't have time to spend uh, theorizing. So, finished. No more generous open purses of, of sponsors who say, I'll put your logo on my webpage. Here's $50,000. <laughs> no more. Okay? All right. We are an industry which has a bad branding, a bad perception, bad image. We're the people who spend too much on drinking too much, on big parties, on galas, on dinners, on dancing, and God knows what, okay? Giveaways, presents, uh, all these printouts and things that were totally unnecessary. So we have, over many, many years, gained a, a negative perception. In, so now we have to go back to zero and start presenting ourselves as we have done over the last five years in a more business-like attitude. And now we have to account for everything, even why we are doing the meeting or why we are holding the meeting. So we used to spend about 20% of our time on sponsorship and 80% on planning. 
Now we spend 80% of our time on sponsorship and 20% on planning. Okay, because without money there is nothing. So it's about perceptions too. It's about perception of our industry. It's about all the bad things, all the sins that we committed in the past. And in the present, we have to pay for them. Okay, there's no free ride and there is no free lunch. Every lunch has a price. You may not pay today, but you pay sometime in the future. Okay, so... We have to remember that sponsorship is not, I give you money, you spend it, okay? Sponsorship is a business method for communicating and marketing. So it's a business method. There has to be measurability. There has to be a lot of things, okay? You can no longer say, go up to someone and say, I'm a charity and I promote all in it for little and could you give me some money? Okay, you can't say, I'm helping everybody get rid of uh, leukemia, and to do that, I have to hire a really expensive venue and spend $80,000 to give $80 to the charity. And they well, what can't, why can't I just write a, a check to the charity? Okay, that doesn't sob stories, ooh, 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 and look how brilliant I am, or how sexy I am, or I've got George Clooney opening my conference. That doesn't count anymore, guys. Sorry. There has to be a reason, okay? It has to be mutually beneficial, okay? You have to be able to explain to them why it is good for them to be involved. It has to be mutually beneficial. And it has to be measured, okay? You have to, at the end, be able to prove that you've kept your promise, okay? All right, so, nowadays when we talk about sponsorship, we are no longer talking about you give me money, I spend it, as I said, or you give me money and I'm going to do something with it. Because then they ask you, what are you going to do with it? What is it for? Okay, and I want proof that it was for that. I want a copy of the bill or whatever. Okay, so you have to treat sponsors as partners. So they have to be involved in your event. A partner has a word to say about the business. Okay, so if you treat your event like a business, he will have to be involved in that business. That does not mean that the sponsor take over the event. It means he is involved in its creation or its construction or in an element of its design or in an element of its content, be it through having a speaker or be it through uh, designing an, a parallel event or a parallel session or something, but they are now your partners. So if you want the money, live with it, okay? You, they are your partners, okay? And you have to look at sponsorship in a different way. It is not about getting someone to pay the bill, okay? That was the past, okay? Their partnerships are different. They're reciprocal. They go two ways. Win-win situation. Yes, are we all in agreement? Good, I'm so glad, okay. Now, sponsorship is not something you start doing today for an event which is next week. Now, we all know that, but we don't act it, okay? Sometimes on the evening of the event, the day before the event, we're asking for sponsorship. Sponsorship is something that is simultaneous to signing the contract. You, have, you start planning the event a year out, and that day you start sponsorship. It is moves parallel to your event. It is a department that is always working in parallel to your event. And the event adapts to the finances, not the finances adapt to the event, okay? All right, so you have to keep doing it. It's hard work, it's slog, it takes hours and hours and hours, and it takes professionalism, okay? That is not an easy thing. But today, if you don't do it that way, you are going to be working for pennies, okay? And dimes and cents. You are not going to be working for the big monies, okay? So you have to make sure that not only you do it for this event, but that your reputation in this event is what's going to carry you through for the next few years. Because the better you do it once, when you come back and knock at the same doors or similar doors, because if you are sponsored by a certain type of company or a certain profile, that is your passport to entering the other companies in the same sector. Your reputation 
precedes you. It goes in front of you. It doesn't follow you. It runs ahead of you. You live, and we all live today, in a world with windows and doors everywhere. Okay, sometimes I'm working on the computer, and I'm looking for something, and I find a picture of me that I'd never seen, and I could not remember where the hell it was and who took it. I have no idea, and there it is on Facebook. My, the reputation is ahead of you, okay? So one mistake becomes magnified under a spotlight, as you know, Okay, uh, that's why destinations are so afraid of social media. So whatever you do that's positive within sponsorship, the reputation that you have, the ethical reputation, your values, who you are, how you manage your company, how you, uh, um, how you keep your promises, all these things, okay, are the things that are going to allow you to get more sponsorship or to get greater feedback from your clients in the future. Okay, it's very, very important. Good news, guys. Sponsorship is more popular than it ever was in history. Companies no longer believe in placing an advert a magazine, in a magazine, a whole page of advertising, or sticking a banner on a website or whatever. Companies believe that sponsorship is their ticket, their golden ticket, for face-to-face -face communication, for meeting their clients, for putting my brand in your face, for making sure that you meet me and associate with my, my personality with the brand, etc. So sponsorship is really, really popular. It has increased like you don't believe. Companies want to say yes. They have to say yes with justification and accountability. And that's what is important, okay? All right, so the bad news... Okay? They are choosing more wisely. Okay? So you can't have the good without the bad. Okay? So yes, they're willing to spend a lot more money. No, they're not going to give it to just anybody. Okay? Or just any project. The project has to be all those things that we've learned all these days. Innovative, uh, new, communicative, well-planned, well-designed, all those things. It has to make them a household name, okay? Now, every event thinks it's a rock star. Every event. Every congress, every musical program, every meeting. Sometimes a meeting with three cats thinks it's a rock star, okay? Every event that you see is the best ever, the biggest, the most wonderful, the most... No, 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 every event. To the sponsors, every event is this. Which one are you? Which one is your event? Okay. How can you convince me to buy the pink Smarty instead of the lilac Smarty? Or the blue Smarty instead of the red Smarty? Which one are you? This is how the sponsors see you. It is your job, not theirs, your job to make yourselves different. It is your job to make yourself stand out. It is your job. This goes for everything, I think, nowadays. It goes for events, it goes for sponsorship, it goes for job hunting. Uh, I'm always asked by associations to come in and talk to the new generations about uh, asking for a job and getting the dream job that they've always wanted. They get the same speech. Why should I pay you money? Why should I pay you money? What have you got to give me in return? What are you bringing to my company that I should pay you for? that I can't do myself already, okay? All right, so, every event is individual, and every event is different. If it's not, it's not an event, okay? It's different, it's individual. What you have to do before anything else is understand what you are doing it, why you are doing something, and why it's important and why it matters. You have to understand. And you have no idea how many people I speak to in a day that I ask. So tell me why you, I should invest in your event. Um, well, we have a really nice website. Okay. All right. So you have to have a business answer. 
they don't want to know that you're going to have 20,000 spotlights, okay? All right? It's not important. You have to talk to them in their own language. So you have to understand about clients today. They know as much as you, sometimes more than you. They've been doing it sometimes longer than you. They've been to more events than you sometimes, okay? And so they want you to speak to them in their own language, okay? And what is their own language? Their own language is the language that allows them to go to the CFO or to the CEO and say, we should spend money on this. So they want you to give them the answers, solutions. You can't expect them to do the research for you. That's your job, okay? So you have to give them the answer. How do I get this, uh, this? And remember that if you're working internationally or it's an international event, it's very important when you're talking, you learn about culture and cross-cultural communication and how people react. We've, we've watched the whole uh, cultural problem on this stage for two days, okay, haven't we? Do you know what I'm talking about? Huh? You are not, well, most of the people in this room are not a culture of stand up and I'll talk out loud in the middle of the audience. We're not. It's not the way you are, okay? Yet the speakers feel a little bit, uh, because nobody asks them questions and nobody reacts. It does not mean that you're not enjoying the presentation and it does not mean that you don't like them and it does not mean that you didn't learn anything and it does not mean that you care. It means it's not your culture to stand up and go around dancing in public. It's not. I come from a culture that's also a little bit reserved. So I understand. Okay, I will be asking you questions at the end, by the way. There's an exam on the way out. Okay, so we have to think of sponsorships not as high tech, but as high touch. Sponsorships are individual. They are not mass, and you don't send out mass mailings, and you do not by any, send out all the petrol companies in the world, here's a mailing asking you to give me some money, and then you phone up, did you get my email? Did you like, do you agree with it? Can I have some money? Okay, all right. It's high touch. It's very individualized. Every request is individual. Every person you speak to is individual. All the research that you are putting into your event also requires research for every meeting and for every contact. It is a high touch. They want personalization. They want you to want something from them, yes, but they want you to have prepared something in return for them, not a mass mail out of sponsorship benefits. Yeah, right. So I make shoes and you want me to invest in something for hats. It's possible, but why? Okay, so you have to learn to do that. Do you know who this guy is? Oh, I adore this guy. Oh, do you know who he is? Yes? Okay. No! Who said no? Prison! Who said no? Prison immediately. Is there a police outside? This is Cristiano Ronaldo. Okay. Now, in addition to having the sexiest bum in the world, in addition to that, he is also one of the best brands in the world. Now, in addition to him being gorgeous and me loving the, having a photo of him there, I don't admire him because he plays football, because I don't really care about football. I admire him because he works really hard. He is one of the best in the world, yet he believes that the only way to be the best in the world is to work night and day to keep continuing to be the best and not sit back and just, well, I'm the best now, so that's it, you know. Okay, all right. So, Cristiano Ronaldo is considered now to be one of the most valuable brands as a person and as his brand. He's worth 54 million euros. Okay, he is now at the age of 30, and he's a footballer. 30 to a football is a lot, okay. At the age of 30 in football, he is now worth 11 million more than he was in 2013. Now, that is something, that is achievement, okay. He has 105 million followers on Facebook, 33.7 million followers on Twitter, 4 million videos on YouTube, 
and he's referred to in four, over 400 books at, in Amazon. This is a brand, right? Does not stop there. He, each Facebook post referring his name is worth 121,000 euros. Each post, okay? Nike designed a specific ball for his award with encrusted with diamonds because they love him, right? Why do they love him? Because he plays football. No, because he brings them lots of money. That's why they love him. If he died tomorrow, they wouldn't care, okay? Second best, well, they would. They would cry because they would lose a lot of money, okay? Second best paid sports figure on Forbes list, okay? And what is this the result of? Hard work, persistence, desire to win, passion to be the best, attitude. Now, the last one is the one that counts. For sponsorship, those are the only attitudes that count. You have to put the work in. You have to be persistent. You have to want to win. And you have to have the passion to make the best event or be the best. And that is how you create a brand for sponsorship. It is very important. It does not happen in a year. You need at least five years of being involved in events and sponsorship to create your brand. How you create it is, is up to you. So why do they buy? Why do companies buy in? Okay, it has to be mutually advantageous. It has to be a business relationship with a contract. It has to have a contract. It has to be in writing. You have to write individual contracts looked at by a lawyer because if the sponsor, there's, imagine there's an enormous crisis, it's happened to me before, and the company folds or goes under or whatever, and he can't pay you, but you're having the event, you've already committed to these things, and somebody can't pay you 30,000 pounds or euros or whatever, what happens? It has to be in writing so that you become a creditor. It has to be measurable. And in the contract, you have to have the objectives. They have to be there. What are you going to do with the money and why are you, you, do you need the money? Okay? So, what has the economic crisis taught us, guys? It's taught us new communication models. It's taught us how to get new revenue streams to support our events. And it's taught us business synergies, okay? It's taught us to look at sponsorship as marketing, that we need to measure it, okay? So when we sit around the table for our meeting, we can no longer take our printout or our beautiful colored brochure of sponsorship benefits. We have to reinvent the conversation because everybody else is doing it. And if you think there's an English saying which says, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. That's not what we want, obviously, okay? Sponsorship is a technical choice. Remember that before I give you some hints. It's a technical choice. Companies opt into it because they have an objective. So if it's a, a drug company, they want to launch something or they want to associate an expert to that to that, uh, that drug. If it's an engineering company, they could want to launch something, or they could want to sell something, or they could want to train new engineers, or tra it depends. You have to understand what it is. It, nowadays, you are blessed. You are blessed, because before you go to a meeting, you can actually Google the company and see what they're interested in, what their, CR, their social responsibility projects are, what their missions are, etc. Think of me doing it 30 years ago without Google. That was a little bit more complicated, so you have no excuse, okay? So it's a technical choice. You have to understand who your target is, what they want, and you have to orient your sales, okay? to meet that need, okay? It's also pragmatic. What do I get from it? What's in it for me? Why should I do it? What do I get out of it? And I don't mean a commission, guys. <laughs> what, do I get? what does my company get out of it? Why? So technical and pragmatic, first choices. It's not about the logo. Don't promise them that you're going to put the logo on your website. Yeah. Ugh. Don't, don't, well, if you said that you're going to tattoo it somewhere, and then maybe, maybe, okay, but it's not about the logo. We live in a world saturated with images and saturated with logos, 
Okay. Now, how many of you quickly can tell me the names of five companies exhibiting downstairs? Quickly. Three. Huh? Okay. Whether you can or not, it, you have to think about it, okay? Because we walk past things, but we don't necessarily register things. If you see what I mean, we don't necessarily register things because there's so much communication. Even cities today are finding it hard to compete because if you look at some cities in the north, they're all very similar. Can we identify the images? If you look at cities in the south of Europe, again, they're all very similar. If you look at cities in southeast Europe, so you have to start creating something that differentiates you. And, and your event must be creative about the way it's going to use sponsorship. But you have to know this as well. This is very important. If you know the business rationale, and if you ask me, I can actually send you the, the, uh, the, for, uh, the report created by Pricewaterhouse uh, about uh, companies and face-to-face and -face marketing, but you have to ask me because I don't have it with me, okay? Uh, you can see that there are actually business arguments that you have to know on the tip of your tongue, that you have to know like that, that you can use to defend your request. Okay, this is a very good one. Okay, but there are many more that you, couldn't, that you would know. They don't want you to talk to them about the gala dinner or the artist performing or the singer or the musician or whatever. They want you to talk the language of business. They want your credentials, your experience. They want to know what facilities you are using, who your staff is, how, how certified they are, how experienced they are in the sector. They want to know your reputation, your reputation, your credentials and your events and the track record of your company and the track record of your events is much more important than saying you'll put the logo on the website, okay? And also the track record of the event if there is one. It's not about the price, but about who am I giving the money to, who's taking my check, all right? It's very, very important. Also, think beyond your own market. How often people forget this. Think into markets that might want to sell in your market. Even if it's a national event, maybe there are markets with that kind of technology or product or something that want to come into your market, that want to sell in your market, that want to start being known in your market. Okay, it's not that difficult. The problem is staying inside and nobody kicking you out. That's the problem. Your objective must be what my objective is. My objective, and I tell my team the same thing is, yes, I only have a few minutes to give you, five minutes, six minutes, 10 minutes. It's that I come out two hours later, okay? going okay if you are still there after those 10 minutes it means they are on the end of the hook that you can reel them in if you have the right conversation okay the marketing director is completely different to the conversation that you have with the CFO.
people and then suddenly you get pushed to the marketing director, have a plan B in your present it up. Do you trust them to present the same way you do? Not really, okay? But if you're talking to the CEO, he'll make the de uh, decision directly, okay? So that is a different conversation, okay? It's very different. So what questions will they ask you today in modern... Look, guys, I like to talk about the future because that's where I'm going to live, Okay, so I'm not talking about the, uh, what happened in the past, what used to be, I, and I'm not an expert on sponsorship. Uh, this is not what I usually talk about. I'm, what I'm sharing with you is my own personal experience, okay, not only in NGOs, but also in my own company and in the events that we do. So this is all based on what we call tried and tested things, okay? So... This is not, I'm not writing a book about it. This is what we do every day. So this is what happens, our experience. What they ask. Okay, it's very important that you never promise media coverage unless you know 100% sure that you are getting it. You have no idea how many companies tell me that they've been lied to. So that then when they are told, they don't believe you anymore. Unless you are 100% sure that you've got media coverage, you do not promise this. This is the biggest thing that irritates companies okay, and potential sponsors. Be realistic. If your event has 200 people, don't ask for 50, 60, or 70,000 euros. Come on. Okay? Let us not be stupid. Okay, and romantic and whatever. Okay, that's for politicians, not for us. We live in the real world where people actually have to work to get paid. Okay, so be realistic. Assess the value of your event. Think of it like a company. How much is buying a share in this company worth? Okay, what's the value of this company? And then divide that value by more than one. Okay, be realistic. Do not beg. If you beg and you say, please, 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 it gives the impression that your event is really bad and you're just so desperate that you will do anything. Okay, don't beg. Don't beg. Have a business plan. Present it. If they say no, if they say, um, well, we're not really ready, go home, reassess it, redo it. Even if they say no, redo it, resend it more tailored and adjust it to them. If they still refuse, walk away. Okay, and then at the end, if your event is a great success, do what I do, send them a report saying, well, this is what you missed. Okay, because you weren't there. We hope we can count on you next year. For no, 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 no. We, you, you know, if you want, like, as we already have a company with your, with your sector. So uh, don't forget, as soon as you can, first come, first served. Okay, they'll be knocking at your door. Okay, don't beg. Keep your promises. Now, I don't care if you lose money. If you promised, you bloody well do it. Okay, a promise is a commitment. That is what creates your reputation, keeping your promises. Okay, that is what creates your reputation. All right, so if you promised, I don't care if you have to pull out your teeth and sell them, you keep it. Okay, it's very important. That is how you will be judged next time. Okay, I have a very smart daughter, when she was little, she knows this philosophy that I have. As soon as she realized that I was a great person about keeping your promise, you must never break your promises. Don't break your promises. I don't know how my husband has stayed with me for 30 years. Don't break your promises. As soon as she realized this, she always said to me, promise, we'll go out on Sunday. Promise, mommy, promise, mommy, promise, mommy, say I promise. And until I said, okay, I promise, she would not give up. Because she knew if I didn't say, I promise, I might not do it, okay? So, and then she would say, you promised. 
so I had to go. All right, okay? Acknowledge them. You acknowledge them at every single moment. You acknowledge them at the beginning. You acknowledge them at the end. You acknowledge them when you see them in the hall. You acknowledge them at all times. You acknowledge them. You thank them. Okay? You, without them, your life would be hell. You, they must feel like this. Oh, my God, I love you so much. <laughs> Don't do that to people. Don't do that. But make them feel like that. I love you. I could not live without you. Thank you. That's how they have to feel. You have to treat them, okay, like they are. Ovanis, speakers are sponsors because they're not charging. So you don't forget to make me feel like that in a minute, okay? I'll, I like hugs. <laughs> okay, so you have to acknowledge them. You have to thank them. You have to thank them at every possible opportunity because they will feel appreciated. And you know, and especially the girls know, how important it is to feel appreciated, right? Okay, guys don't deserve us. Okay. <laughs> Promise less, give more. Okay, make it your life's quest to always give more than you promise, a little more. So maybe, uh, I'm going to give you a little example. Maybe putting an insert into the bag of a delegate is a separate uh, uh, sponsorship opportunity and it costs, I don't know, 500 euros, let's say. But they've given you 10,000 and that's not on the list and then you you take and you put an insert in the bag and you write them and say, we've decided to give you an additional benefit. Because it's not just you no know, use doing it. Do it and shout about it. That's the whole idea. Play the trumpet. Because if they don't know, they're not going to appreciate it, are they? Okay? So do something and then make sure that you shout about it. Okay? Measure. Measure the return on objectives. Make executive reports at the end of the event. Send it to them. Tell them how valuable they were to your event. Send them statistics. Send them figures. Send them reports that of people, the comments. Have something like make sure that every delegate have a free photographer that takes pictures of every delegate that goes to their booth. I don't care what you do, but make sure that you measure their return, okay? Because if you don't, they will. And when they do it, it's not as generous as when you do it, okay? All right, so make sure that you measure. Because if you don't, they won't come back, believe me. They may come back once, but that's it, gone, okay? I, I had a sponsor recently in an event, which was to... The objective of the event, uh, one of the objectives, was to raise as much as possible for a certain, uh, a certain cancer research. Uh, institution. And one of our sponsors, a very rich company, complained that they didn't like the food. Okay? And I said to them, so uh, you would have been okay if I had taken thousands of euros and spent on catering, top of the line catering, and not have been able to have given so much money to the research of cancer, so that would have been okay. So next year you'll sponsor all the catering so that we up the quality, the total of the catering that you would like for every lunch, every coffee break, every dinner is so much. Can I count on you for the sponsorship of this for next year? And I got a call from the CEO. I said, what is this all about? Because, of course, I said it to him, but CC, CEO, marketing director, CFO. And I said, ah, one of your, I don't like my sponsors to be unhappy. And one of your staff was not happy because the coffee breaks only had two types of biscuits. And so he was not very happy. And so I don't want my sponsors to be unhappy. It would be so depressing. I'm, my reputation is my go, no, 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 no. And he, and he said... Thank you very much. And then I got an apology letter from the person and the personal check for the charity. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's, that's actually a misspelling. I, I wrote something that I cut it and I didn't uh, type it in again. Ask them open questions. That's what it should say. Ask them open questions. So what do you value? What would be your company objectives for my event? What do you wish to achieve? Ask them lots of questions. Questions are not offensive. Answers can be. But questions are never offensive, okay? Okay, 
Don't go in for those, I have a plan, a sponsorship plan. So, of course, this is my sponsorship plan. So, this is what we have to do. No, pick and mix. Let them choose. Let them pick what they want. Maybe they don't want any of this. And maybe they want a bit of this and a bit of that. Let them come back to you with their own proposal and then reanalyze it. Maybe you can't say yes to everything. I, I don't say yes to everything. But maybe you can look at it again and see what you can do. Okay? Contracts, I've already said. Okay? And send a report. Okay? Even if they say, said no. Even if they said no, at the end, send them a report of how successful your event is. So what's new? Sponsorship has to be intriguing, fascinating. Sponsorship has to be creative. They have to want to be there. So you have to create an, a desire to participate. It should be intriguing. It should be engaging. People should be interested in this sponsor. You should create an, um, a halo or something around the sponsor that makes it interesting that people will want to go and talk to them. So an ev maybe a little event within an event. I'm going to give you some examples later. And it should be interactive. The more interactive it is, the better. Okay, the more interactive it is, the better. So, this is a guy who's an, a brilliant guy, uh, uh, Paul Bridal, and he talks a lot about uh, c what companies want, and that's why I took the picture, because behind him are the three most important objectives. It was a great slide, so I, this is my picture, so I can use it. It says, define the value, define the value of your event and wh how much it's worth. Understand the impact of your event. Why is your event important? What is your event supposed to be doing? What is it going to do? What's the objective? And then manage your relationship with your sponsor. It is not about, we got the money now, so okay. Keep going back to him. Keep talking to him, even after the event. But during the event, as you go up to the event, well, we've thought of this other opportunity where you may want to be involved. We've thought of this other situation where you may want to be involved. Or you are not involved in this, but we'd love it if you do get involved in this. Or we'd like to invite you to be involved in this. Make sure that they feel that they are continually being bugged because they are nice and you're managing their relationship very well. Because everything in life, and this is one of them, but everything in life, even with me at the conversation we had at the beginning, is about deposits. It's about depositing in someone's emotional bank account. Okay? I have an emotional bank account. We all have them. And just like my children soon learn that when you put the cash card in the machine, money doesn't come out if there's no money in the account. Okay? You have to learn also about emotion. You have to invest in your clients, in your sponsors, in your friends, in your family, in your relationship, so that you can get things out of it as well. Okay, it works both ways. If you don't invest in it, don't, you don't get anything out of it. I often have uh, people who only phone me once a year. I know when they're going to phone me, three months from their event. Okay, this, or they send me a, a message on Facebook. It says, hello, Linda, how are you? And they ask, I'm very well, thank you. And you, oh, fine, thank you. And then the next day they ask me a favor. Okay, don't be like that. Your whole team has to have an attitude to sponsorship. They may not be working on sponsorship, but they all have to be involved in it because what you promise to the sponsor has to be delivered across the event. So everyone has to know what you're promising. So those people responsible for the sponsorship must be communicating to the rest of the team. Okay, so you come out of a sponsor's meeting or you resend something to a sponsor and of course you transmit it to the team. It's a whole team approach. Quality does not lie in you only and it does not lie in what you promise. It lies in the whole thing. So you have to have a whole team approach. The briefing is for the whole team. Even if they're not involved in sponsorship, the briefing is for the whole team, guys. Okay, now... No one will sponsor anything if you do not have Wi-Fi. Okay? Forget it. No free Wi-Fi, no measurability, no sponsor. If you remember nothing else, remember that. 
Wi-Fi is like water. Wi-Fi today is the equivalent of when you open the tap in a hotel and there is water. I do not expect to be told to go outside with a bucket to get water to have my shower. Okay, all right? No Wi-Fi, no sponsor. Today, you have to measure the interaction. The Twittering, the Facebooking, the whatever. You have to be able to measure. We communicate within the event, with photos, with gamification, with all sorts of things. One of the favorite things that my sponsors now like to sponsor is a Twitter wall. Okay, I don't care. You can sponsor whatever you like, even my shoes, as long as you pay. That's fine. Even my grandmother is for sale. I don't have any problem. Okay, but sponsorship, and it has to be fast, and it has to be reliable. You can't say, I have internet and free Wi-Fi, and then nobody can get on it. All right? Okay, it's very important. Okay? If you have a charity or a cause or something, it is very important to sponsors nowadays because they've been really bad guys. And now they want to look all sweet and honey-covered and cute and lovely. So they want to say to everybody, look, I'm so nice, I'm protecting bears or I'm planting trees. Okay, it's a lie, but who cares as long as they pay. All right? Okay? So accessibility to a wide audience. Okay, engagement, pre-event. The more engagement you have pre-event, during the event, post-event. Oh, sorry, guys, you're all trying to photograph the slide. Um, the more engagement you have, the more you can charge for sponsorship. This is like a basic requirement now. Forget yesterday. We're looking, our eyes are on the horizon, okay? The future where we're going to live, okay? So you have to have engagement. You have to have someone who does it continuously. You cannot do as 99% of the events do is create a web page or a Twitter account. We've got one. Yes, well... You have to have someone who's continually feeding it and updating it, etc. We now have a media, social media officer for every single event. And that is a person we actually, yes, we pay them to be on Facebook. Then we actually pay them and that's all they do. Okay, that's all they do. They spend an hour to two hours a day on each Facebook page of each event. So they are given a certain number of projects to manage, and they are Facebooking and Twittering and God knows what all day. That's all they do, day and night and night and day. Okay? And they can't believe they get paid to do that. Okay? It's very important. Okay? All right. Now, I'm going to go through because I know I'm not going to have time to do all of them. So this is all for you. So that's fine. Don't fudge on demographics. Now, fudge means don't lie about the figures. It's so easy nowadays to find out what the f true numbers were. So do not think of lying because somebody will catch you and that will be the end of it. Okay? It's very, very important. Cause whether it's the environment or people, our industry is about people, okay? And if you can link to something, if you link to a cause, to a benefit to the neighboring community or to where you are, or even, for example, one of the good things that's in fashion, as you know, is imagine that a mega superstar heart surgeon is a speaker at your conference, have him do a free operation at a local hospital. Oh, have him do a class for surgeons at the university in addition to the presentation. It's so easy to benefit the community. All you have to do is be creative, okay? It's very, very important, okay? Talk business, not logistics. It's not about how big the room is, how many parallel sessions, none of that rubbish. That is rubbish to the sponsor. It's more about business, the business benefits, okay? It's very important. Trust, you have, as I've said before, you have to establish trust. Position yourself as someone who cares and someone who believes in something. Remember that speaker that was talking about look at your passions and your values. If you truly believe in something, start going out and giving away and being involved in that. But be sincere because if you're not really telling the truth, you will soon be found out. It's very important. Okay, now this is another thing that you must remember. They will never forget you until they meet someone else. This is just like a relationship. <laughs> no, it's because they get thousands and thousands and thousands of requests. You have no idea how many requests a company gets. Yours has to really be the rock star. 
So make sure that it is memorable for all the reasons that we mentioned. You will not be considered if it's after you comes someone who's done it better. It's really important. Talk about the value, not the cost. Okay? It's not about the price. Price is what you pay. Okay? Cost is what you pay. Value is what you get. So what you're telling them is the value, what they will get. For th That's why salesmen tell you about, you want to know the price of a car. You have to wait 20 minutes, right? Oh, it's got this and it's got that. And I don't care. I'm a girl, okay? I want it to have a steering wheel, four doors, and I want it to start in the morning. That's it. Okay, but no, I have to know about everything and the wheels and the thingies and the things that go bleak, bleak, bleak that I'll never use. Okay, and then they tell me the price because they've listed six million things. Half of them, I don't know what they are, but I think, wow, it must be a brilliant car. I don't even know what it does. Okay, will it serve me breakfast, I wonder. Okay, but that is important. Tell them about the value. Okay, it's very, very important. You have to change your mindset when you're going to sponsorship from being suppliers to being solution providers. That's your job. You're asking them to buy something, okay? So you're giving them a solution to something they need. So look at them, what is their problem? For example, if you go to a bank now, what's their problem? Image, okay, positioning, etc. They'll Okay, look at the worst banks. The worst banks are the ones losing clients. They want to get them back. Okay? All right. Make sure that you flirt, that you kiss, and that you tell everyone about it. Okay? Because it's no use getting the sponsorship if you then don't use it to benefit you. So it's not just about the event, but when you get one sponsor, use him as your call to action for other sponsors. If it's a good, high-level, branded, interesting sponsor, he then immediately appears on all your branding. He's happy. And the others look and see, oh, they've got him. Maybe it is a good event. Do you get it? So flirt, kiss, and then tell everyone about it. Not, not, not if it's really your boyfriend or your husband. I'm talking about only as sponsors. Okay, only sponsors, okay. Remember accountability. Just as you have to answer to your client, they have to answer to their CFOs, etc. So it's very important that you tell them exactly what they're getting out of it. Okay, you have to showcase your talents, okay. Remember that giving them lots of little wows is better than giving them one big wow because you give them out. It's like children, you know, like training children. If you do that, I'll give you a chocolate, okay. Now, if you behave for the whole day, tomorrow, Tomorrow you'll get another chocolate, okay? It's better than one big wow. And don't talk about the exhibition area, okay? The trade show. It's so boring. I just want to shoot myself if I see another trade show. It's dead. Change the name. Change the concept. We call ours experience centers, okay? We prefer that. We, may, we want it to be like this, like Alice in Wonderland, and not a square thing where nobody ever, you go and have coffee at one end of the room, you try not to look at the exhibitors, so that if they look you, they catch your eye, you feel obliged to go and speak to them. Create areas within the, sponsor, uh, the, the exhibition area. For example, create little one-to-one -one lounges, not just standing up. It makes people feel comfortable. They want to stay there longer. They want to be there. Create areas in the exhibition area where people can have meaningful discussions with sponsors. Maybe a sponsor wants to pay for that table. I, can ease, I sell those tables. I can have 10, and in five minutes, they're all sold. Okay, where they can hold forums and they can invite specific people to discuss things or give them feedback on their brand, etc. I have to go through quickly. Make it open so that.
things you can tape yourself and give an opinion on a brand or the exhibition or the speak on you have no idea how popular these are people queue up to make a little vid video on it and sponsors love them because they get feedback on their brand and on what they did these are very very popular okay little games technology can help you here we had a feedback wall uh, you could either leave your feedback on on the computer or you could write Write on the wall. More people wrote on the wall than wrote on the computer. More people wrote on the wall than on the computer. We had to bring in more. It's wonderful. And the clients all took them. They are all in their offices now. Okay, they love them. Okay. Uh, so you have to impress sponsors. Don't sell too cheap. Okay, request this, uh, uh, a realistic amount of money, run the event like a business, don't beg, talk the meeting as it pertains to their business, not to yours, add value to the package all the time, use each sponsor as a carrot for the next sponsor, okay, produce it, shout about it, create a buzz, we all learned about buzz, I don't have to talk about that, make it easy to buy in, make it rewarding, Okay, make it accessible, okay, easy to find, make it valuable, worthwhile, and they will buy in, I promise. Okay, thank you for listening. Any questions? Oh, lovely. Well done. No, no, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, please. The number one, sorry. Yeah. No, they don't. Yes, they don't really, it, it, we talked, the, the, the previous presenter actually touched on that. They don't really know what they want. So when I'm saying take a business proposition to the meeting, this is one of the things that I get good at. I make sure that I have someone on my team, because I have two researchers who work full time, and I make sure that they research what is bad about that company? Are they bad communicators on TV? Are they bad communicators through their website or their marketing? I actually research. I find all their little black holes. Okay, and then I put all the answers to the solutions to the solution provider, solution providers in the little thing, and and then I say to them, no, no, no. and then I say, and when they don't look very interested, because you know why, I will tell you. I'll give you some free consultancy. When we were researching your company, we realized that, and, 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 and we can actually be the first stepping stone for you to change this kind of uh, uh, perception that you have in the market. We actually spoke to 10 of your clients, and this is what they told us. Da, da, da. So we do a lot of work for them, and sometimes we go in and we ask them for 5,000, and then we come out with a project. They say, would you be able to help us change this perspective? And I've got a new piece of business. Okay, so it's more about provide they don't know what they want. And a lot of companies, like the other gentleman gave us an example yesterday. Do you remember? He walked in to, Brit to the British Airways and they said, go away. And then three years later, they were phoning him and said, could you a year later, could you come back and talk to us? So yes, you are right. I think media coverage, getting their voice on, on, on the media outlets like television today, more about television than the written media. The written media is not such an important thing. They always associate it with negative reporting, okay? So getting their face, not their face of one person, but the company associated with good things indirectly through projects they're involved with, through awards that their scientists win, through all sorts of things, the media outlet is television that's most popular among the people that we talk to, whether international, global, or local. Okay, so I hope I answered your question. There's more over there, too. 
oh, three. <laughs> I'm so excited. It's wonderful. I love to talk to people. Hello, my name is Despina, and I come yeah. from Macedonia. Lovely session. Oh, I love we Estonia. We really enjoyed it. Fantastic. I love yes. Estonia. Uh, I have a question. Uh, at what stage of negotiation do we bring up the budget issue? At the beginning? At the begin right at first the start. Meeting. First okay. meeting. I'm very transparent. Okay, this is my event. This is the cost of my event. This is the objective. For example, if it's uh, an association and they need to make a profit, okay, this is what the association is going to spend. This is their revenue. They expect to earn about 40% of their revenue through registrations and 60% I have to have sponsored them. This is the objective. This is what they do. This is why they're doing this. Da -da 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 -da. Right at the beginning. What commitment can you make to my budget that will help my bottom line and will bring you benefits as well as accompanying. The more transparent you are, the immediately the more they trust you. If you're fudging and hedging until the end, no, be upfront. They understand, they know there's a budget, there has to be, or else you're not a professional. Okay. Thank you. Don't send it to them. Ask for a meeting to show them the budget. Don't send budgets to anybody. Hi, Linda. Yeah, Lovely hi. Lovely presentation. Thanks for um, delivering. So my question will go in like three directions. Say if you have a history of organizing events for about 10 years and they are uh, specific for a certain target group on topics uh, that are relatively constant and you haven't worked with sponsor up to this point. Uh, how do you find a good starting point? How can you turn this into an advantage at the negotiation stage? Well, if you need a sponsor, there must be a change. Okay, yes, if you've yes. done it until now with no sponsors and you need it, there must be a change. What is this change and what justifies you going to talk to them? If you have a track record of not needing a sponsor, that is a good business reputation. Mm -hmm. You've been able to deliver good objectives, a good event, I presume, uh, to with by fulfilling the objectives, no sponsor. Now, what's the next step? Maybe you're growing the event or whatever. Maybe you feel it's time to share this knowledge or this. That's the first step is understand what you, what's your argument for now going to knock on doors and then look at it from a business case. It's like looking for a new partner in the business or looking for a new investor. Why are you doing it? Okay. Okay. So if you are a relative, if you come from a relatively small company, do you turn to sponsors who are also small or medium sized or you go for the big no, brands? No, you don't do that at all. That's not no. the mindset. The mind, it's nothing to do with the size of the company. It's to do with the event. Mm -hmm. okay. You go and you look for whoever can provide you or help you partner with you to provide the answer for whatever you have. It doesn't matter if the company is one person or 6,000 people. That's not relevant to the sponsors. What is relevant to the sponsors is the objectives of the event, the track record of who's organizing it, and what they will get out of it. That's the only thing. It doesn't matter what size they are. It can be Apple. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Linda, first of all, brilliant presentation. Congratulations. Uh, my question has something to do with uh, the previous question. Uh, when we're looking for our first sponsors, um, I would like to hear from you what do you think, how important uh, it is for us to choose uh, the right kind of sponsor? Is it, uh, does it matter who it is? Oh, uh, yes. Or no, as long as it gives us the, the money that we need? Absolutely and the, not. I Good would like to hear that from that's you. That's sponsor suicide. Uh, no, 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 no. Suicide by sponsor, which is even worse. Uh, no, 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 no. Again, it goes along the same lines. Who is aligned with your objectives? Which companies would ha have a track record of investing or, or supporting these kind of missions or these kind of subjects? And you start with them. They are your first port of call. It doesn't matter if they're big or medium or small, but do they support these kind of objectives? So, for example, I don't know. If you're trying to educate children or you have an, let's say you have an accounting conference, a conference of accounts. This is an example. Okay, which bank at the moment is trying to clean up its reputation for being fraudulent because of uh, misleading clients, okay? And they are now investing in a three-year long-term plan to educate children at schools for free in association with schools on m financial management, managing your money, managing your home money, managing your, your salaries, etc. Which bank is that? No, they're even more corrupt. No, no, no. 
Barclays, okay, Barclays has a three-year long-term plan to, and it's the social responsibility platform. It used to be planting trees. Now planting trees has died, and they're going to teach children how to manage money, young people. So you're looking at their investment in young people. So maybe you have a session related to this, and maybe you ask Barclays to choose the speaker for this session. And while you're at it, maybe they can sponsor something else within the session or whatever. You have to learn to be creative. You first, what is your objective? What do you need? Or how can you tailor your objectives to that particular client? Okay, does that answer your question? Okay, totally, great. Anything else? No? Well, it was an honor to meet you. Thank you. Linda, thank you very much indeed. Linda Pereira, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely fantastic stuff. And if she can learn to be not so quiet and reserved, she might deliver even more knowledge. Thank you, Linda. That was fantastic. Well done. So now we're going to take a break. Uh, you can take the full half hour. So I'd like to invite you to come back in here at 4 o'clock. So 4 o'clock, back in here, please, sharp, and uh, enjoy your coffee.